Okay, Taylor, here we go. Please read what I've written here on this little board. Words are memory made. Greg Drozdek, July 21st, 2021. So Taylor and I are going to try to have a conversation based on this sentence that I came up with today. And we're going to try to only talk about this sentence. And then we're going to see how we did by listening to it after we post it online. So I'll say it one more time. Words are memory made. What do you think, Taylor? My first question is, why is there a hyphen between memory and made? I'm making it a compound word, but it isn't one that's like homemade or babysitter. So I'm leaving that hyphen to show that it is two words, but in this word, they are both the adjective that is describing words. Okay. Another question. Um, are you saying that all words come from our memory, even new learned words? So there's a lot in this sentence that isn't said, and I'm going to call that subtext. So yes, words is all words, not some. And... The word, you, the word you use is from, and that's also implied in the memory made, from the memory. But I want the sentence to be succinct, and so that's why it's the way it is. What do you mean succinct? Short, direct, to the point, and the primacy of the first word, words, lets you know what it's about, uh, and not memory. So it's not memories, memory makes words, it's words are memory made which is similar to words are made from the memory. Does it ha also have to do with that they're made for memory? Well, that's a, that's a different statement, but it's definitely related, yes. So what I've purposely, purposely done is not used a, pro a preposition of for, from, or by, and I've tried to say this in as few words as possible to have less ambiguity. Words are memory made, being it understood, Taylor, that all words are the words I'm talking about in all languages. How do you define memory made? Okay. So I used made, which in this case is not a verb, but is a neutral statement. It's not um, positive or negative. And so in one sense, I'd say that I'm using it to say that words derive or come from memory. In another? In another sense, the word memory, though it's singular here, implies plural. Because words are plural, there is no single memory, but it's memory with a big M in a way. It's, it's our communal memory here. What about the words that we have learned that are forgotten? Are they still in our memory? Well, I, that's a good question, Taylor. I think that if a word's in a dictionary or a lexicon, it's not completely forgotten. So one of the other contexts here is I've written it down on a board, but we're also speaking about it. So the context here would be words that have been written, words that have been read, and words that have been spoken. In those three modalities, there are, exist in some sort of personal or communal memory. And it, when we put this on the internet, it will be another form of memory for these words. Do you think that there's, um, do you think that, that we think of words uh, by themselves or in a sentence or, or both? I think we can, we, we definitely, before we have words, we have sounds, and they're words that, that sounds became words when they got attached to a thing. So a baby cried, and for example, and somehow that cry became ma, and then somehow ma became mother, although it's many different languages that have the word mother for mother, very similar. So I think sounds came before words, and then words became words when they meant something, and then our notion of sentences are the way we use words. 
We don't have to use words in sentences. Quite often they're in phrases, or quite often they're in, <laughs> there are sentences that could be one word, like if I say to you, stop. The word that I'm not saying in that sentence is you. You know, when I say stop, uh, with an exclamation point that you hear, I'm saying you stop now. But I need to say it quickly, so it's, it's one word, but it's still technically a sentence. So I think, I didn't say sentences come from memory for that reason, because I think sentences are further down the line from what I'm talking about. I'm talking about words, and one of the ideas I had is maybe partic- to take a particular word that's pretty common to try to test this little thesis out. If it's true for one word, it might be true for others. But I don't, I don't have an example so far of what we're saying. Well, I'm trying to understand this memory made a bit more. Uh, is there a, is some, some type of compound like antonym for memory made? Is there something? I've never heard it before. And I, I had this sentence playing around in my mind a few times. And one of the versions of it was memory makes words. But then I realized that by putting memory first, the primacy of that means that that's really what I'm talking about. And what I'm really interested in is words here. So I think that by making it memory made, there's a sort of deliberate vagueness about that. Just like handmade. You know that handmade isn't machine made, but you don't know whose hands made it. So there's a, there's a generality to that. But I think in some sense, without memory, there can be no word. That's one rule for words. Without memory, there can be no word. But there are other things that you need to have a word. Yes, this is not, there's no only in this sentence. Uh, that's true. But I guess the sentence makes you think about what else, what I'm getting at is it makes you think about what else you need to have words. Yes, there, 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 th- this sentence, which is a thesis of mine, leaves out space for the other things to be included in what makes words. And I in no way think that memory is the only thing. And it also doesn't say how memory makes words. So I'm trying to, trying to be vague in a purposeful way here. Um, So I thought a little planning would be like, if you could pick a word um, that in some way is not from any sort of memory that you had, not a word that you've read, heard, uh, wrote. And if you could, and we could show that it's not from anything that's been given you through your senses of hearing, sight, seeing it on the page or hearing it, someone say it or reading it, then this would be wrong. And this might be kind of straightforward, but then I'd be interested to try a word out and see if it works with this formula too. What type of word? Uh, let's use the, a word in English, uh, a word that you might, uh, might come to your mind while well, looking out the room here, perhaps, or just any word you can think of. Well, English. today I was listening to a poem, and, but this, this is a contraction, right? But shan't was a word is that too old no i don't use that word but robert frost did right and i've never used it i've read it before and i forgot that i've read it because it's Mm -hmm. not used anymore Mm -hmm. maybe someone used it as a joke occasionally to reference but so when when you just brought it up now what were you using to bring it up of course i'm i'm using my memory but Mm -hmm. anything that comes up now a human will use their memory Good. Unless but, they're some Zen master, maybe they use nothing. Right, so know. so, in my sentence is the same as yours, except instead of anything, I say words. Anything you say what? Instead of the word anything, I say words. Sure. Something might come up that isn't words, that is not requiring memory, but I just want to stick to the idea of what can make words, and primarily I believe that it's memory. Sure. Well, of, of course, even if, even if it's not in your memory, you can, you can assess how it isn't in your memory. You can right. wonder how you bypass this word or thing, given all of the experience you've had. For example, 
you know, if you talk about an actress that you think I should know, mm. then I use my memory to think, when would I have known her given my experiences? Right. So you're Even though she's not in my memory, she's in my non-memory. Yeah, yeah. So, so we remember what we don't remember too, uh, even though we don't have the words for those things. And when it comes up, you say, ah, I don't, yeah, and you associate with something you do know. So, like a word, like maybe you can posit this was the first time you might have heard the word lady instead of woman. Well, I struggle with that word. I don't remember the first time I've heard it, but I still try to use it now. And certain, I don't know what to use females, women, ladies, they get offended if you use it, and certain ones get offended if you don't. I don't remember the first time I I know I remember the first time I heard it at the poker table mm. and that was when I was in Amsterdam and they call the queen a lady the card the, when the card turns and it's a queen we say queen mm. they call it a woman so, some Frenchmen say woman some people say lady interesting and we say queen and that's for all four all four of the queens they're all ladies they're all ladies yes, yes. So there's definitely a notion of status with lady that isn't with woman, which is man and woman or male or female, sort of a fact of science. But uh, my first time I heard that was an uncle explaining to me that all females are women, but not all women are ladies. And he, then he said, all males can become men, but not all men are gentlemen. So I knew that lady and gentleman was something more formal and more rare than just being male. Mm -hmm. And I never heard an animal called lady or a gentleman. I knew that it was something that just people had. Mm -hmm. So the, I think that this sentence is somewhere connected to the, my memories very strongly, even in different languages, growing up around different languages, that this word lady. Um, and then as I go in deeper, the family I lived with, they had a dog named Lady. So I knew that that was ironic because by the time I met the dog, I realized that she was anything but a lady. And then I saw the movie Lady and the Tramp, <laughs> which is mm -hmm. another dog named Lady. And that's mm -hmm. when I put it together that they were naming the dog in life after the dog in the cartoon. And there was another way of using Lady that, had, that broke my rule. Because I mm -hmm. thought ladies were just for humans. And apparently that was too simple. Well, I'm trying to figure out if... Because I can't fully understand this, this, this sentence, at least yet. And I'm trying to figure out if it's a finished sentence for mm -hmm. you. Because knowing you for as long as I have, I know that you, you possibly could have a finished sentence. But you, it also could change to something more. Because memory made, you're also playing with imagination. And there's a lot of things around this words are memory, memory made sentence. Maybe you have, maybe you, you, you simplified it here, but maybe you change it again. I don't know. Uh, I'm, this is a work in progress, definitely. I, I think that uh, this, this could be say, dif said different ways, and it's not the first way it came to me. It's also not the way I would normally speak, but it is grammatically a sentence, and that was my goal, to say a sentence. And I wanted to make a sentence that could induce some thought that would get a reaction that was more than yes or no, or always or never. So the way I did that was by using a really neutral verb, are, and then I didn't say what, came, what comes after are is not fact. So it's not like saying uh, dogs are animals, because that, that might be technically a sentence, but there's, no, there's nothing there to think about. So words are memory made is not, uh, there's definitely a paragraph at least that could be said about this, if not more. But as far as this sentence goes, I see it as sort of like a thesis sentence or an introductory sentence to saying more about what, where words come from. And the word from is definitely very loud in my ear, even though I don't see it. Well, what's, what's also tricky here for me is that memory is something that has is complete from the past and made as something that's finished in the future. Yes. So th this makes this m sentence more dynamic and challenging to understand. Um, so 
I would need a little more time to. Well, that's the that's the that's the goal, and when we get together next, perhaps we can uh, talk about why I did not say words are memory, because uh, I don't think that's true, even though it's very similar to the sentence I have here. Okay. Thank you. Till next time. <laughs>